You ever stop and think how the Emperor really does seem like one of those guys who just has a plan for everything? Well, boy, do I have a theory video for you. Um... You don't have a plan, do you? No. To be honest, I didn't think I'd get this far. Hi, I'm Krona the Harlequin, and welcome back to Live from the Black Library, where today I want to go over a theory I just had reading the novella Fury of Magnus by Graham McNeil, which was very, very good. And in this novella, we get confirmation that the Emperor was both gathering insight about galaxies outside of the Milky Way, but also quite possibly had designs on going there, very likely in Conquest. But this raises a very interesting question. Did the Emperor know about the Tyranids out there in the Void Between Galaxies? But before we get into that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video, and please subscribe if you have not already done so, it really helps the channel out. And I would also like to take this moment to plug my Patreon. As many of you know, I was never able to monetize this channel because then my parents might find out about it, and that would be catastrophic. So, to aid myself being able to move out and get away from them, I started a Patreon, which I announced in the previous video. And honestly, the reception to that has been mind-blowing. How many people have come out to support me has been touching beyond words. So if you are one of those people who is willing to support me on my Patreon, which is actually not for this channel, but for my new upcoming History channel, which will be launching in November, then you have my eternal and wholehearted gratitude. However, do bear in mind that patrons will be able to vote on topics for this channel and see videos on the Live from the Black Library channel a day early. So, even if you're not into the history content I will be making over there, that Patreon will have something for you as well. But without further ado, let's get into the video and answer the question if the Emperor really did know about the Tyranids. In any case, the the passage from the Fury of Magnus where this comes from is when he and a few of his sons, including Azek Araman, have infiltrated the Emperor's palace during the later stages of the siege. This is because Magnus, back on Prospero, had had his soul shattered into several shards, all of which were different aspects of himself. And he can sense that here in the Imperial Palace, the best part of him remains, and he wants it back so that he can be redeemed and be whole again. It goes like this. Auslight steps, 300 meters wide led up towards the great entryway, their entire length obscured by sprawling favelas of temporary structures, tents, awnings, and lean-tos housing the living tides spilling from within. Civilian refugees from the Katabatic Plains, the Petitioner City, and Palace Outworks that were now nothing more than mud and rubble. Trees had once lined the Grand Approach Boulevard, Silver Birch and Sycamore, but they were long gone, hauled up by the roots and burned in cook fires. Magnus let his sons between the craters of their uprooting, each absence like a rotten tooth pulled from a gum. He halted as he set foot on the first stair, and a memory pushed into his mind like a dull knife. The Emperor, gazing up through the observatory's etheric lensworks to show Magnus the secret births of stars, and speaking in wonder of the incomprehensible voids between them. Together, they had plotted the entire course of future crusades, and laughed as they imagined the campaigns that would one day reach out into the fathomless gulfs between galaxies. There is nothing impossible to him who will try, his father had said when Magnus had spoken of the nigh impossibility of reaching beyond the halo stars. No one yet alive will see it, but when humankind can fly as we fly, see as we see, then the greatest prize of all will be within their grasp. What prize could be greater than Dominion of the Galaxy? Magnus had asked, but his father had never given him an answer, turning away to hide his disappointment. Memories centuries old, and ashes in his mind, but Magnus recalled them as though they were but moments ago. This happens after Magnus enters the Observatory, a region within the Inner Palace that he and the Emperor used to spend a lot of time in together before, you know, all of this. And we see it stated pretty clearly that they were planning campaigns past to the galaxy. It doesn't say that they were just musing or joking, but it does state clearly that the Emperor intended to move past the galaxy, past to the Halo Stars, and he predicted that this would happen at some point in the future where he and the rest of the Primarchs probably wouldn't be alive anymore, which is really weird. He literally says, no one alive today, and seems to be planning for a future where the human race is while maybe not at his and Magnus' levels, but at least approaching that psychically, which honestly seems damn near impossible. But this is the Emperor we're talking about. 
Impossible was not a word in his playbook. The big thing though is the little blurb after this a few pages later where we really get the purpose of this artifact laid out in plain English. The ancient ocular artifact the Emperor had wrought to scry distant galaxies swayed high above the center of the dome on broken chains, like the corpse of an enormous mantis wrought from spun silver, smoked glass and gold. The obsidian speculum in its curiously angled lenses apparatus had been shattered at the first impact of weaponry, and most of the device's impossibly complex workings hung like loops of intestinal tract from its split casing. Magnus's heart broke to see the damage, knowing that nothing else of its kind had ever existed and never would again. When this is all over, will the prize be worth the price paid? The thing that should be noted about this passage as being one of the most important bits is the fact that it doesn't say spying glass, it says scrying glass. By definition, scrying is gazing into a medium hoping to receive significant messages or visions that could offer personal guidance, prophecy, revelation, or inspiration. Like how fortune tellers will stare into a crystal ball, they're not actually seeing images pop up or seeing it like a camera, they're seeing, allegedly, the way the light dances or distorts and this gives them insight into the future. You see a certain glimmer or hint of light or shadow in the sphere that shows you that something bad will happen, something good will happen, and you interpret those signs accordingly. I should note I'm a little bit biased here because I have a long-running beef with fortune tellers. One actually hit me with her car when I was in the 10th grade. I was jaywalking, make no mistake, but she hit me with her car, got out and made sure I was fine, and then when she contacted my family later, she told us that she was actually a psychic and had foreseen something like this happening a few days in advance. So we were wondering if we could actually use that as evidence in court against her, uh, but it never went anywhere. And as many of you will know, I am a journalism major. I got a really long degree in it, it's something I really value, it's something I really enjoyed, it's something I'm almost never gonna use, hence why I'm screwed if YouTube doesn't pan out for me. And during one of my assignments near the ending stages of my program, we were told that we needed to find someone and film them in a short documentary so we could practice video editing, story crafting, and interviewing skills. I ended up interviewing the owners of one of my local game stores, but I did see a psychic's place near my campus, which I tried to get in touch with because I thought, hey, that would make for some really great footage. But when I called this lady, you know what she has the audacity to tell me? Sorry, my place is under renovations. I wasn't expecting guests soon. You weren't expecting guests, lady? You weren't expecting guests? Yeah, I bet you weren't expecting guests. Oh my god. The absolute nerve of a psychic to say I wasn't expecting blank is just insane. But back on track. This was the Emperor's way of seeing what was going on in the wider universe past the Milky Way galaxy. He couldn't see things directly, but he could interpret signs. And this is what makes things interesting because you would assume that scrying is based on the warp like all magic is in Warhammer, and as such, it wouldn't apply to the Tyranids themselves. This is because of the shadow in the warp. So, they would have seemed just like a void in the skein of space to him. However, wouldn't that void indicate something wrong? And there's also the fact that it's not just about where the Tyranids are, it's also where they've been. If the Emperor scried out into the void and detected entire galaxies that were now either completely dead or in the process of dying because he would be seeing them in their past as opposed to in their present, remember when we look out at galaxies we see them as they are in the past, he would reasonably have to assume that there was something causing this, that all of these galaxies weren't just going up in flames left, right, and center like this, and that there was something causing it. But then we also have to look into the fact that we don't know how old the Tyranids are. The only hint we get is the word eons, and that really is a word without proper definition. So, it is possible that the Emperor simply never had the chance to look that far out into the cosmos to see what was really out there, or see what was coming. There's also the fact that the Tyranids were not drawn to the galaxy until the middle of the Horus Heresy in M31009, after the warsmith Barabbas Dantioch sacrificed himself to destroy the Pharos Beacon to ensure that it didn't fall into the hands of the Night Lords. The psychic backwash from this destruction is what drew the Tyranids to the galaxy, not the Astronomicon as some people used to think. The excerpt goes like this. Far beyond the fringes of the galaxy, there was naught but endless black past the last few stray stars plying their lonely track through the cold night, past the dead worlds 
and the fragments of galactic collisions billions of years gone, past the probes sent out by extinct races recorded in no history. Past all that and beyond, there was a night sea studded with the diamond islands of distant lonely galaxies. Though incomprehensibly vast, this sea was not empty. Great behemoths of the deep lurked there. Into the eternal blackness, a flash of quantum energy shone out at many times the speed of light. A brief flare, milliseconds in duration, projecting from an unremarkable spiral of stars. It was not missed. In the darkness, something of limitless hunger stirred in a slumber that had lasted eons. A million frozen and unblinking eyes saw the flash, tripping cascades of stimuli. Their purpose served, the eyes died. The entity processed the message the eyes provided without ever truly awakening. Automatically, instinctively, its gargantuan dreaming mind analyzed the signal, comparing it against all parameters for the one thing it sought. Prey. Slowly, glacially, the Great Devourer shifted its course. And after this, first contact would be made with the Tyranids en masse in the galaxy in the late stages of M41 meaning it took almost 11,000 years for them to reach the galaxy. But it's said that they were moving slowly, and that would make sense so that they didn't expend any unnecessary biomass if this lead turned out to not be good, because if they're going to take 10,000 years to get somewhere, the food may well be gone by then. It should also be noted that the Milky Way galaxy is about 100,000 light years across, so considering the fact that the Tyranids were moving at a quote-unquote glacial pace, how far away were they really from the Milky Way galaxy? It seems like they may have been near to our doorstep to begin with, just by chance. And furthermore, the closest galaxy to the Milky Way, that being the Andromeda galaxy, is roughly 2.5 million light years away. The gap between galaxies is damn near unfathomable, so since we can assume that the Tyranids were moving well below sublight speed, this means yeah, they probably were right near the Imperium's doorstep. Just for fun, I crunched the numbers. If you take 10,000, multiply that by 365 to show the number of days it took them to reach the galaxy, and multiply that by the number of meters a glacier can travel when moving at top speed, that being 30 meters, you end up with the Tyranids having traveled a total of 109.5 thousand kilometers. Which isn't really a lot when you consider the fact that one singular light year is 9.5 trillion kilometers. Our entire solar system is 1.5 light years across. Now, in reality, this is obviously the Games Workshop writers having no proper idea of scaling, but if you do take this for what it is, they really were creeping right there like Michael Myers from the beginning. But this actually would probably play into the notion that the Emperor wouldn't have known, because he wouldn't have seen them while peeping on other nearby galaxies, simply because the Tyranids would have just missed them altogether. And this is coupled with, of course, the shadow in the warp, which would have affected any warp-based scrying abilities that could have revealed them to him. With all of that in mind, though, it's really interesting to wonder what the Emperor would have made of the Tyranids if they actually showed up during his time, like during the Great Crusade, or if he had been alive long enough to see them invade the galaxy. How would he have reacted to that? Would it be finally the first thing that well and truly catches him off guard? This is something I find so interesting, because this theory of a now out of the picture galactic leader having possibly predicted a coming threat to the galaxy and been trying to prepare the galaxy for it, is one that is not just in Warhammer, but also can be found in Star Wars. You see, a lot of people actually think that Emperor Palpatine may have predicted the extragalactic Yuuzhan Vong invasion, which occurred roughly 21 years after Palpatine died and resulted in the deaths of 365 trillion people. Given how wildly ineffective the New Republic's leadership and military were in dealing with the Vong, some people believe that Palpatine was trying to unite and militarize the galaxy so they could repel threats he saw on the horizon. Which, even though it's probably not the case, does seem like something the Emperor would have done. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think it would be more interesting if the Emperor did know about the Tyranids? Or do you think he actually did know about them and was trying to prepare? Or do you believe this would have caught him entirely with his golden pants down? I'd love to know what you guys have to say in the comments below. Please consider subscribing if you have not already done so, and consider checking out the Patreon because every little bit really does help and it means so much to me. And until then, I will see you in the next video.